And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, well, hello and welcome to 100 Watts and a Wire. My name is Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel. And this is Amateur Radio Amplified on 100 Watts and a Wire. Whether you're an experienced ham or just getting started, this podcast was created in 2015 to help mentor and document my process. I wasn't mentoring anything or anybody in 2015. I would be, uh, I'd be the mentor e or the mentored, the mentored. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know my ass from my elbow. Does that clear it up? 10 years along now, season number nine. I've learned a few things. I've met a few people who know things. And like the half man says on Game of Thrones, I drink and I know things. I don't know where it comes from, but I do have an interest in the Middle Ages, and that was a damn good show. It was put together to now mentor, it's a little bit of entertainment and to provide a community for amateur radio operators from around the world. Just want to thank you for being a part of this show. I couldn't do it without you, literally. We do have a sponsor, Powerfilm Solar and Gigaparts are here with us. You know Powerfilm Solar, they provide quality power solutions for your portable operating needs. And you can explore everything in their fine selection by going to gigaparts.com. In the search bar, put 100 watts. This is good for several reasons. Number one, it helps engagement. It shows both of those fine companies that you guys are paying attention and that you're interested and you're engaged. And when it comes time for them to re-up, they will probably say, ah, maybe let's catch up again in the summer. Maybe fall, maybe winter, maybe next year. They just uh, want to see the engagement. It's a free and easy thing that we can do. Just open up a browser and do that. You can help the show. It's for free. But thank you to Powerfilm Solar and Gigaparts for running with us. However, that said, we are mostly member-supported. You guys, the listeners, the members of our community, help support this podcast because you find value in the content, and the community, and I raise a glass to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. We'll talk about another way here in a little bit that you can provide support for the community. Heck, if you go to 100wattsandawire.com, buying a t-shirt, a coffee mug, whatever, all of that sort of stuff helps support the show. On the last episode, I talk about my upcoming move from Missouri to Florida. This is a family move. It is work-related. And I'm going to share the journey with you. I'll do shorts on TikTok and uh, maybe put them on Facebook, but you'll see them on YouTube as well. Just sort of documenting the process. I have so much to figure out. Number one, the house. Number two, the job situation. What, what's that going to be? I don't know. Very proud of my wife. You know, she's going to be solid. An excellent opportunity there in Florida. I want to meet all the hams on the southeast in Florida specifically. I'll be in the Sarasota area, and I'd like to meet you. Learn all about the things. I, I could end up in a dreaded HOA environment down there. I don't know. Maybe stealthy. Maybe hanging up things. We'll see. But I'm going to take you along with me as I augment my ham radio lifestyle. A lot of things are going to be changing. Okay. Job, location, schools. I want to bring you with me. I think it could be compelling enough for the content. And if you find value in this content, in this community, we're on Discord, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, consider becoming a member. Consider the dipole level. One dollar an episode will certainly help pay for the bills, the subscriptions, and all the things that go with that. 
but I may actually be able to do this as a job. I'd love to do this. I mentioned on the last show, I would do a morning ham radio show. You could listen to it live as you made your way to work. I would do that. Heck, if a percentage of our regular listeners, these regular downloads, were in a dollar an episode, baby, we would be rolling. We wouldn't be rich. But the job thing wouldn't be as scary trying to figure that whole situation out. No pressure on you guys. You know, I love and appreciate you. We've been kicking it since 2015 together. And it's, you know, it's, it is what it is. I don't intend to, even if I struggle finding the work-life balance, I plan on creating content remotely. That's kind of what I do and what I need to be doing. I want to continue. I will continue producing as much as I can. It may take a slight adjustment in time, maybe even the date. I don't know. I'm going to take you with me along the journey. If uh, if you dig it, let me let me hear you do. Let me hear you do the Ric Flair. Woo! One of you that will help. One of you, just one of you. Buymeacoffee.com/slash/100watts slash is a way to help the show and the community. We can at least get the subscriptions and the programs covered, the software it takes to keep things going with the show. Anything above that is extra and appreciated. Buymeacoffee.com, 100 watts and a wire. Friends, uh, I am going to end up becoming part of the journey here, which I think is very cool, um, is I'll be leaving behind a really nice antenna situation. I can operate on any of the bands that I want. And I do. And moving to Florida means that I need to, one, and I don't know this yet, could be an HOA, right? Could be a stealth. Could I could be moving to an off-center fed dipole. I could be moving to mobile operations only or portable in the parks, you know, somewhere, somewhere out there away from alligators. That's kind of the, the intention at this point is stay the hell out of the mouth of an alligator. Keep my kids safe and the little dog too. See? Mobile and portable operations, and it could be a challenge. Anytime I go portable, and we will do portable as scheduled, June 9th, 10th, and 11th for the 100 watts and a wire tune-up. Please participate in this. I think you will enjoy it. All you got to do is get on the air and call CQ tune-up. Good grief. The fallout this year will be from a new residence. I think I'll be coming back here too. As I've mentioned before, this is a family homestead. It's been in the family for 50 years. We're taking a hiatus uh, for a career path. That's what's happening. But I'm thinking uh, my best bet probably will be portable. I don't rule out the fact that I can have an antenna in the house. But right now, oh, you know how it can be, man. A lot of neighbors, they don't want to see that. They don't want to see that stuff. Could be rules. I might have to put up a flagpole and salute. Fly my flag, my freak flag, and uh, have a little antenna on the inside. Share with me your stealthy HOA antennas. I know some of you guys are doing stuff in attics. I know some of you are in pine trees, depending on where you are. We're going to follow and document this process because like in 2015, I'm starting anew. This is a whole new thing. I've been spoiled with the amount of space I have. I'm going to say I worked hard for it. You guys know, you listen back in this archive, you're going to know that the woods, which I do business in with eight, eight antennas, kick my ass. Anytime the wind blows, something's coming down. I've done a lot of clearing and maintenance changing over the years. This is actually a refreshing change. Although, you know, if I'm not set up in my house, uh, when I get to Florida, then the amplifier, you know, I may as well stay here. Does the 7610 go? It's hard to think about it sitting somewhere. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. You feel me? Give me a, give me a, a hell yeah or something like that. Woo! That'll do. That'll do. That's fine. It's a life change. It's a change in the hobby. 
the hobby is so secondary, guys, and I'm fortunate enough that I have a portable setup that I can take can take it with me. I do have HF and VHF in the mobile. That's part of the thing I want to talk to you about. I did a mobile antenna uh, swap out, if you will. I was doing a diamond antenna, and I thought, you know, I talked to Sidecar, Sidecar said a Larson always served him. I put the Larson on for several months during the wintertime, and you know what? The repeaters here in this part of Missouri near St. Louis are so like, <laughs> every now and again you got somebody on it, but mostly nah. So it's hard to A, B it, right? And I ended up going back to the diamond antenna. For some reason, I liked it. It's a little longer. It's taller. It's got this sort of function where the antenna can lift up out of its kind of container and fold over. If you can picture that. As for antenna numbers, I don't have the numbers. I'd have to look it up and I can drop it in Discord if you're listening to this. I don't know if this video will make it up, but the audio most certainly will. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. But it's got a tilt function in case I need that. I've never really needed it. But there's something about that antenna that it was an original. It worked for me when people are friggin' talking. If they talk, will you talk? Maybe Florida will be different. I don't know. Where are my Florida people? Let me know how the repeaters go there. Are they active? So I swapped that out. I was getting a little bit of noise. I heard engine noise coming across the radio when I was on VHF, two meter, listening. I was like, oh no. Thought about it for a couple minutes and I was like, ah, maybe a loose connector. Maybe somewhere between the hood of my truck, which is where I've got my antennas mounted. I don't have them on the roof or, or on the back on the bed. Got them on the, uh, on the hood. Maybe from that coax back to the back of my truck in the back seat where I keep the uh, power supply, where it connects to the antenna. Maybe something was loose. Freaked me out for like a day and a half. I hate hearing it, my engine coming through. Like, oh. Put some ferrites on um, the cables in two different spots as it comes across the body of the truck retightened everything, reconnected, and it seems to be all right. There's just, I think there was a couple local changes to frequencies and thinking about reprogramming my um, frequencies for the uh, two meter 440 rigs or the HTs, the handhelds, giant pain in the ass. You know, I, I use some software that works on a PC. Maybe I can do that. Oh, Lord, I got to add that to my list of things to do. But I think locally here in this part of Missouri right now, a couple of repeaters have changed. Like the tone or something. Something's off. There's some squawking going on. And it's just like an open microphone or like when somebody's not quite making it into the repeater, the noises that you'll hear. I think a couple of clubs have shifted and I need to do some more research locally. Naturally, uh, looking at the Sarasota area in Florida, what am I going to run into? I need to look that up. So if you're in Florida, I'm interested in hearing you and your ideas of what's going on. If you're beating an HOA or one of the things is I don't know what the house is quite yet. We're talking maybe a month out, maybe six weeks, something. So... When I know more and what that aesthetic is, what's in the yard, is there a yard, is it an HOA, what the f is going on? Jesus Christ. Then I'll know more about what my options are, but things are going to change. I'll be operating mobile and portable for the most part. So I'm interested in anybody that's down there walking around. I got a friend down there, Tony. I got a couple of friends down there. Ricardo, they may not be in that area. But they're down there. They may know places that I can drive to and set up. And of course, I can look them all up too. But uh, it's on my list. It's a change, y'all. It's a change coming. I also repurposed. You remember when I had my hex beam? Yeah, that's right. I had my hex beam up there. And um, 
probably three or four years, it did quite well. I'm still a fan of the hex beam. It was a little cumbersome to work on by myself. And over time, I decided I was going to take it down. And in its place, I would just put up a two, two meter 440 antenna in that area because I had some things kind of concreted and poles and, you know. But what I did have left over from the hex beam was the tilt. See, I had the hex beam on a tilt probably up 25 feet on some galvanized pipe. It's kind of heavy when it's linked together. Plus, you've got the antenna, and I'm out here by myself. I managed. I managed. Winds came. Storms came. Caused some damage. But we managed. We got things back on track. We kept it going uh, for the most part. It was a lot of work for me, though, because I'm out here kind of in the woods, man. Anywho, I kept the hardware, right, which was a tilt. I'm not sure. I think I got it from DX Engineering or I got it from MFJ. But I decided instead of the telescoping pole, which has my 2 meter 440 antenna on top of it, instead of like having to get a ladder because I think each section is like 6 to 8 feet, right? I need to, I need more. I need to get up on a ladder. I decided, let me put this tilt on here. That way, this isn't nearly as heavy anywhere close to being as heavy as the hex beam. And hex beams aren't heavy, but my rotor was up at the top, see? And it provided a little bit of weight up there. And, oh, you got to be careful. Well, the 2 meter 440 has been on a telescopic mast, probably about the same, maybe 32 feet. I don't know, man. We're about, I don't know, 30 feet, 25 feet, something like this. The antenna itself is very long. So it's up there, good piece. And instead of like bringing each section down, undoing the coax each time to adjust or check or clean or whatever we would need to do, I said, I'm going to get this tilt on this some of mama. And that's what I did. And I can tell you, it is a whole lot easier to bring the 2 meter 440 antenna down on the tilt. It is very lightweight. I still bring the ladder over because that antenna is not going to lay flat on the ground. It's got those short radials. I don't know. They're 18 inches, 2 feet. Don't hold me to the length. But there's three of them poking off the sides, right? They're elevated radials. And I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't bend one of them of... I've bent them before. I've had it come down because you're dealing with about 25, 30 feet of height. And you're trying to control it coming down, right? But that, that, my friend, was a bonus. That was a great way of uh, understanding why ham radio operators keep a lot of the gear, the hardware. Man, I keep the bolts, the nuts. Oh, the nuts. Sorry about that. Woo! Didn't mean to bring that up. But I like to uh, to hold on to some of that stuff. Pardon the pun. And uh, it paid off. I want to tell you about the 100 watts in a wire tune-up before I get out of here. You guys are very kind doing solo shows because of, again, my daughter became a teenager. We've got Mother's Day, so we're just catching up. I want to tell you what's going on in my life. You can now understand the delay and what's going on here because of life. Sometimes won't leave you alone. You're making important decisions. Home and travel and school and all the dynamics that go with a life-changing move from one state to the next for a job opportunity, which is very, very good and very happy and proud as a husband of my wife. And I do need to sort some things out. So please... Consider becoming a subscriber. This will help take the worry away from just paying the traditional bills of it. Okay? Look at the dipole level $1 an episode. If you can do that, $4 a month, that would be very helpful. All right? It's cheaper than your own cup of coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash 100 watts and read about all the options you can give and set up monthly you could pay all at once if you want to. There is an extra bonus and a thing I'm going to start off here soon. And maybe I need to wait until we get down 
uh, and settled into Florida because I want to create a cohort of our members. What do you say in see child? What does this mean, cohort? What the huh? Well, each month I'd like to meet once once a month, maybe on a Friday night we get together. All the members will be invited to come share their projects, their struggles, help answer other people's questions, talk about things you've done, what has worked for you, what you're struggling with. A cohort, a benefit to membership, if you will. I'll bring Sidecar's ass in here. I'll bring him in here. He asks for a little bit of the scratch. He's like, you're going to give me our money. No, Steve has never asked me for a dime, and he's been uh, my primary ham radio mentor since the beginning. There you have it. The 100 watts in a wire tune-up is coming up, friends, June 9th, 10th, and 11th. You can operate any band, any mode, any time. Call CQ 100 watts, or just call CQ tune-up. People will say, what, mm, what's this all about? Is this a special event? Is this a contest? Not a contest. It's an operating event. Twice a year, we get on the air. The tune-up in the spring gets you ready for field day. Test your antennas. Test your radios. Get out there. Exercise your brain and your health, your body, all this. And then when you get out there with your club on field day, you might not be able to do what you wanted to do, but you could do it on the tune-up. Get yourself ready. Start thinking about the things you'll need for field day, your connectors, your power, your coax cable, the radios you're going to run, staying dry, giving yourself shelter if you're operating outside. The tune-up can help you with all of this. June 9th, 10th, and 11th. Any band, any mode, any time. It can be digital. We've been getting storms here in Missouri for days and days and days. I've been unplugged most of the time. Springtime here. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. I know I'm I'm dealing with a brand new weather situation when we get to Florida. Um, and I'm planning on covering that content. I am inspired by the fact that I've got a new situation a new challenge that I can share with you because that was why I started 100 Watts in a Wire to begin with, to document the things I was going to. It was uh, the life of an amateur radio operator, if you will, dealing with the struggles. I'm going to have a whole basket of stuff I don't even know yet. I'm going to share it with you. But mark your calendars June 9th, 10th, and 11th for the 100 Watts in a Wire tune-up. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast these things don't always make it to video. Video is a bit secondary. I do enjoy the live stream aspect of it, but we're managing different content assets. We've been an audio podcast since 2015. A couple of years ago now, I guess maybe a little bit longer, we joined YouTube and live stream became a thing and an option. We like to see each other talk and live interact Sundays at six o'clock. On YouTube, everybody's welcome. When I say everybody, I mean it, damn it. Everybody. Everybody. And it's always been that way. Consider becoming a member at the Dipole level. One buck an episode, and we'll be able to cover our cost. And if uh, more of you do that, more of our listeners do that, maybe I expand 100 watts in a wire in the offering, and I do a live morning show from Florida. Like I'm talking about, I, I'm going to need a job, for real. I may as well work for you. What the hell, huh? Right? Buymeacoffee.com slash 100 watts for that. Also, I want to let you know that uh, another one of our friends is BioNO Power. If you're looking for portable power options, BioNO Power. B-I-O-E-N-N-O power.com lithium phosphate batteries for all your portable operations. And they've been with us for many years now. No questions asked. They just, they're in, they're in. And I may have been the first podcast slash content thing that they started, you know, advertising on i know they've got around there with and been on different shows and that's cool i think it's great exposure they've got a great product we appreciate them thank you bio and power kevin i'm looking right at you look at this all right 
that's enough of the look. It's kind of weird. I was like, you owe me something, but they don't owe us anything. We're very happy to have our working relationship with bio no power. Okay, friends, I think I have uh, said all of the pieces. You know what's happening by now. We've got a change coming to my operating situation. My life in general is going to change, but it's also going to change for the better. And uh, my family will be on the East Coast yet again. And uh, we'll see how things are going. We're going to learn all this new stuff again with the weather and the alligators and the sand and the wind and a potential HOA. You know I, I don't want to join an HOA, but it's possible. It's quite possible this could be a thing. I'm going to be renting. Maybe you got a place down there. Let me know. holler at your boy. Let me know. I, well, we got some things to settle up. All right, brothers and sisters, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. We're double dipping here on this weekend. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts. We're also on YouTube. We'd love to have you there as well. Check the description for Discord, Facebook, the Tickety Talk. I'll be doing Tickety Talks probably even on the ride out there. That's so easy to do at a rest stop. I could be taking a leak right there and then I upload it for you. I would not show you that process unless you... Unless you want to see that, girl. Take care of yourself. Look after each other. And by all means, if you can, please try and stay above the noise. 7-3. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.